This question is about functions and about algebraic fractions. So let's start straight away. It tells us we have this function here, a rather complicated looking function. The domain of it, well, x can be any real number, but x has to be bigger than a half. And it tells us to work out various things. Let's start off in part A. Show that f of x is this. Now we know the game with these ones. We know that basically this is asking us to uh, deal with some algebraic fractions. Simplify this algebraic fraction and it will end up looking like this. So let's start off with uh, the original function f of x we are told is equal to 3 multiplied by x plus 1 over 2x squared plus 7x subtract 4 subtract 1 over x plus 4. Now the reason I've left a gap here is always stage 1 is to factorize. You must always try and factorize. So the bottom here well, how does that factorise? Well, it factorises as follows, like that. So the first step is always to try and factorise. See if anything can cancel. Nothing can cancel, so there's nothing we can do here. Now, the next line, uh, we are trying to uh, subtract fractions. You need to make the denominators the same. So this would give us that 3x plus 1 subtract. To make this the same, I'd have to multiply top and bottom by 2x subtract 1. Then I'd have the same denominators and I could subtract them. So therefore I'd get myself uh, subtract 2x subtract 1 all divided by 2x subtract 1 x plus 4. Now notice what I'm doing here. Everything's in brackets. This subtract is subtracting everything in that bracket. I notice students write the following. Instead, they wrote subtract 2x, subtract 1, and then they get the numbers wrong. Keep everything, all your factors, in brackets and expand out at the end. So let's expand out now. This is 3x plus 3, subtract 2x, and then negative, negative 1 is plus 1, all divided by 2x, subtract 1, x plus 4. When you do that, you get yourself x plus 4 over 2x subtract 1, x plus 4. Oh look, what a surprise, there's a factor that can cancel off top and bottom and you get, as asked, 1 over 2x subtract 1 and you're done for four easy marks. So step 1, factorise. Step 2, look to cancel. Step three, if adding or subtracting fractions, common denominator. Step four, then combine plus expand. Step five, factorize look plus look to cancel, plus cancel if appropriate, and you get yourself the answers. Okay, let's go on to part B now. Find f to the minus one of x. Now, very important note here. Many students go off and differentiate and find f dashed x. f dashed x is the gradient function. Or another word for it is the derivative. f to the minus 1 of x is the inverse function. And you must know the difference between these two. So this was not asked for in this question. You are asked to find the inverse function. Be very careful to get those right. Okay, when finding the inverse function, let's use the simplified version now. Why would you use the more complicated one when you've shown that it actually can be written in simpler form? You know that f of x is equal to 1 over 2x subtract 1. Easiest way to do this is to let y equal uh, 1 over 2x minus 1. Then swap x and y's. Okay. And then make y subject. Now you're going to make y the subject. So we can multiply out by 2y minus 1. So x 2y minus 1 is equal to 1. Multiply out 2xy, subtract x is equal to 1. Add x to both sides, 2xy is 1 plus x. Divide both sides by 2x, y is equal to 1 plus x over 2x. Write it in f to the minus 1 form. Therefore, f to the minus 1 of x is equal to 1 plus x over 2x. Okay, and you're done. Now, I'm just going to take this with me for the next part. The next part says, state the domain of f to the minus 1. 
Now, just looking at that, the only thing that's going to cause you problems is x being 0. That's going to cause you big problems. So x can't be 0, right? Now, is that our domain? Well, actually, it doesn't turn out that that can be our domain, okay? The answer is x is bigger than 0. And let's just think about this. Now, many students will get this wrong. Let's just think about this. The easiest way to think about this is to go back to the original function. Our original function is the following, and we're told that x is bigger than a half. Okay, we are told that x must be bigger than a half. So, in our original function, whatever it ends up looking like, it starts off, let's hit, so say here, x is bigger than a half. Right? Let's just say it looks like that. Now, the inverse function is a reflection in this line here. So this coordinate here, let's just say, is a, is a half zero. The key point in the inverse function would therefore be zero half. Right? So it would end up looking something like this, maybe like that. Okay, we don't care what the function looks like. But clearly you can see that the inverse function is not defined for negative x. The same way that um, the original function was not defined for less than x this is a half, okay, it is not defined for negative x, so therefore x is bigger than zero and must be the domain. Now how do we know that the graph didn't go down here, the original f of x graph, how do we know it didn't? Well, looking back at the function, if x is bigger than a half, this number here will always be bigger than um, 1, so this will always be a positive number. So you have to think of it in that sort of way in order to get this answer here. Lastly, find the solution of the following. Now, you must get this right. f g of x is equal to 1, 7. Let's just take a second over here to write down what that means. f g of x means f, and I want you to always do this, of g of x. So f of g of x is equal to a 7. And that means, uh, what is g of x? It's ln of x plus 1. You'll work out f of ln of x plus 1. Okay? So you're saying that f of ln of x plus 1 is equal to a 7. Now, f of x, uh, we had previously, was equal to the following. 1 over 2x minus 1. So remember that f of x over here was 1 over 2x, subtract 1. So we're going to substitute this in for x. So we're going to say, therefore, that 1 over 2 of ln x plus 1, subtract 1, is equal to a 7. Notice the 2 is just multiplying by the x, not by the 1. And then if 1 over this is equal to 1 over 7, then we can flip them both and say that 2 ln x plus 1, subtract 1, must equal 7. Add 1 to both sides, 2 ln of x plus 1 is equal to 8. Divide both sides by 2, ln of x plus 1 is equal to 4. Take exponentials of both sides, x plus 1 must be e to the 4. And then subtract 1 from both sides, x is e to the 4. Subtract 1, you have found your e answer nice and easily. And that's it.